welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching and welcome to your June monthly overview. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very big high level look at kind of what's happening in the world, what's happening astrologically and it's going to be quite interesting. We're going to match some things up. We're kind of going to put our finger on the pulse of the zeitgeist or we're going to check the temperature of the collective consciousness, that sort of thing. We're going to see where are we at and we're going to see how that matches up astrologically, if indeed it does match up astrologically. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's a bit of a post-rationalization with astrology, which is fine. I think it's a terrific language to use to kind of put a framework on some of these abstract things like culture, like you know, the mood, the atmosphere of the collective in the world today. You know, I think sometimes we need to framework these things. We need to pin these things down. And thank goodness we have the language of astrology to do just that. So as a high level look, and before I get into this, this is the first time I'm doing a monthly overview in this way, in addition to the two part one, part two videos that I've been doing. Okay, this is my second month doing this. So <laughs> last month I just did part one and part two. Uh, so I am still exploring the structure of how I want to do this and I am still experimenting. So this time I had this brilliant idea. Yes, I'll do part one and part two where you can go in and click on your actual sign and just watch your bit and carry on with your day. So you've got that, you've got the detail for your personal self. And then I thought it'd be really quite neat to have on top of that just one more video which covers, you know, what's going on in the collective consciousness and can we see any trends astrologically. And I think that is a really neat uh, format. It also enables me to shift things in and out a little bit. So last month I looked at Saturn as part of your slow moving planets. And this time I'm pulling Saturn out of your slow moving planets and I'm going to talk about him here in the monthly overview. So the reason I'm doing that is so that each month there's a little bit of variety each month. So in your monthly one, this time I'm focusing on your Rahu Ketu uh, axis, Ketu Mars conjunction. I'm touching on your full moon a little bit. So that's a little bit new and different there. So each month I'll just vary it. So maybe in the monthly overview next time I might be talking about Rahu Ketu axis or I might focus on Jupiter or I might focus on Mars it might be something different so that way for the slow moving planets like Saturn for example which stays in a sign for two and a half years it's not going to get boring it's not going to get repetitive you know what I mean so that's what I'm looking to do so be prepared that uh, each month the structure should change a little bit but it will always be I'm hoping it will always be part one, part two, and then a nice overview video where we're looking at collective consciousness. We're looking at, you know, what's, what's touching all of us, regardless of what house, just in terms of what sign uh, things are happening in the zodiac. So I think this is, this is going to be a format that should work. It should keep it interesting for you, fresh and interesting each time, and it'll keep it fresh and interesting for me too, because, you know, we need some structure, but we also need some variety as well. Right, so let's take a look at the month at a big high level overview. Big events. We've got summer solstice happening on Thursday, the 21st of June. How exciting. So that's going to be a really long day for us here in the Northern Hemisphere. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, g'day, my fellow Aussies and Kiwis and South Africans. I don't know, do you guys have like a, a g'day equivalent? I don't know if you do. Tell me if you do. Because I'd love to say hi. I should Google this. I'm so tempted right now to Google what should I say to um, to people in the south of Africa there. Uh, and of course, any other countries that I've just missed out. I've probably missed out loads of things. But yeah, I mean, you guys are going to have in the southern hemisphere uh, a rather short day and it's probably going to be cold. So uh, that's going to be lots of fun. You guys have longer days to look forward to and me I've got shorter days to look forward to which I can tell you I'm very happy and grateful about because it means I don't have to wait till like 
you know, very late in the evening to be recording these videos. I quite like to have the night energy uh, around me as I do this work. So we've got the summer solstice, 21st of June. Uh, we've got new moon happening June 13th in Taurus, which is fantastic. And, you know, good time to plant seeds, good time to plant wishes, all that kind of thing. Yes, it's Taurus. We're dealing with the sidereal Vedic astrology system here. And, you know, great time, Taurus. Hey, I mean, what, what do you wish for materially? You know, maybe jot some things down, start visualizing, that sort of thing. And then, of course, we've got a full moon, June 27th in Sagittarius. And if you watch your little mini report in part one or part two, I did touch very briefly on the full moon in terms of which house it's going to be happening for you and what kind of culmination to expect or what kind of thing you might be looking to integrate into your life. So if we take a look at the collective consciousness and see what is going on out there, I have been keeping up with various media on various things. I watch a lot of YouTube and I read a lot of, um, you know, the New York Times, The Guardian, the Sydney Morning Herald. So it's kind of US, uh, UK and Australia. That's these are these are the media outlets I tend to tune into and I've been watching lots of things uh, definitely over these last few weeks and what I've noticed that's huge in the collective consciousness right now is definitely the Me Too movement. Everyone seems to be talking about it. It is the big thing and I was looking at that astrologically. I wanted to see what's going on here and if I just bring up my system now I'm able to see that Ketu is in, and Ketu is the south node, for those of you who are more into Western astrology. So we've got the south node in Capricorn there, and we've got the north node or Rahu in Cancer. And to me, that just, you know, without going to nakshatras, without getting too complicated, and in Vedic astrology, we can go to some very interesting places. But I think for collective consciousness, it's really nice to just keep it simple and just go for uh, the solar signs, you know, the Capricorn Cancer. It's, it's great to look at things at that really simplistic level. And really, it's very interesting when you look at Capricorn and Cancer, because what do we have here? We've got, you know, a sign that's very masculine. Uh, I believe Capricorn is a very masculine sort of a sign. And then we've got uh, Cancer, which is ruled by the moon, which to me is a very feminine, free-flowing sort of a sign. So it's no wonder that in the collective consciousness today, we've got this kind of um, this thing happening between men and women. I've also got a note here that I've seen lots of videos in the collective just recently, just in the last few days, about what is feminism. <clears throat> that's been a big topic and I know that ever since um, Meghan Markle got married which is a recent thing that happened this month now there are a whole load of uh, videos and debate and discussion going on in the collective consciousness about is she really a feminist and <clears throat> that is quite interesting as well a lot of videos about that so it's no wonder that there's quite a debate going on between you know it's it's a power battle a little bit with me too. There's a lot of talk about women being paid the same in workplaces. Why is it that some women uh, aren't earning as much as men even though they do exactly the same work? And that's a really big topic of conversation. I'm going to have to have a sip of water because <clears throat> I'm just about to choke. So this is really interesting, isn't it? It's like, and I'm looking at this and I started clicking around on my screen. I started clicking around, all right, when did Rahu Ketu Axis come in here? So I'm going to talk about Saturn here. I am also going to talk about Rahu Ketu Axis a little bit uh, in terms of the collective because this was so interesting. I Google searched on Wikipedia. I wanted to see, all right, when did the Me Too movement start? And it was so fascinating because when I clicked to see when does Rahu Ketu Axis come into Capricorn and Cancer, uh, it was so amazing to see that in Wikipedia it said, Wikipedia states that the phrase, the hashtag Me Too, sprouted virally in October 2017. And I went, wow, this is great because when I clicked to see, all right, what's happening with um, Ketu? 
I mean, Ketu just steps into Capricorn at that point in time. Uh, it steps into Capricorn at, at, in October 2017. It's just absolutely fantastic. And then we've also got Saturn just about to step into Sagittarius. And this is also where, uh, what else is going on in the collective consciousness today? Well, there's a lot of debates going on. And there's a particular professor, Professor Jordan Peterson, who is absolutely shot to fame. In the last, I would say, I mean, I'm thinking kind of the last, definitely October 2017 type time, you know, he kind of came into terrific prominence. Uh, even though he's been a professor for a very, very long time, I think it's like, what is it, 30 years or something? Have I got that right? Uh, I know that he has been doing his lectures and, and this is his profession. He's a professor of clinical psychiatry, I think. Um, I've just been catching up on the videos uh, on YouTube and watching and, and watching this debate unfold. And it's pretty amazing that um, a person who is now I've been watching him and his teachings and he is very much the Saturnian and where is Saturn? Saturn is in Sagittarius it's absolutely perfect it's the men in men in suits house I like to call it Sagittarius you know the professional thinkers these are the people who know this much is true if you watch my song dedication for Sagittarius You'll know that I have this thing about, you know, five sensory truth. I know this much is true. I can map it. I can pin it. I can, you know, taste it, feel it, touch it, sense it, hear it, all that kind of thing. So the men in suits have come and mapped the world and they've done that through academia and through religion. And Jordan Peterson to me is a classic ninth house sort of a person and he's also I haven't been able to see his uh, astrology I would love to but um, you know you can see it in the build of a person's life and and in terms of what they do for a living and I, you can see that he's highly Saturnian you can also see that he's quite the ninth house uh, person and uh, a professional thinker the man in the suit very much so and it's really fascinating that as soon as Rahu Ketu Axis comes into this place where we're looking at a battle of power between men and women, so we've got the king and the queen here as well. Very often you see the mother in um, you know, the fourth house and you see the father in the tenth house. In Vedic astrology we do it that way. Some people see the father from the ninth house in Vedic astrology. I choose to see him from the tenth predominantly. So, um, you know, mother, father, uh, queen and king, that kind of thing. And we've got this thing about feminism you know feminism is the big thing are, are women earning the same and me too movement and and all this kind of thing is going on it's absolutely fascinating because definitely what i'm seeing in the astrology is that it's it's supporting that and this will continue as a theme if i have a look for how long i mean rahu ketu is here for a while uh, it's here until say april march april 2019 you know um that's that's a while that we're, we're going to be discussing some of these things so i find this really really fascinating uh saturn i wanted to do a little focus on saturn yeah i mean for me i think this saturnian thinker that you know he's he's been lecturing for a long time you know he's, he's been doing this work for a really really long time as an academic and you know he's getting his 15 minutes of fame now and it's kind of uh it works in the collective consciousness because it's almost like you know there's this discussion about women that's coming up and then there's this quite saturnian sort of character coming onto the scene giving the uh yeah, I've got here a note, the rise of opposing energies, you know, giving voice to the other side, I suppose you could say. And it's so fascinating to watch. And there are many debates going on right now. Uh, that one that I watched that was absolutely brilliant that had Jordan Peterson and Stephen Fry on the same side. That was a really interesting debate to watch. I watched the whole thing. It was great. Um, yeah, and then of course there are lots of virals and it was fascinating. Today I was watching a video that I think was about an hour and a half long. I didn't get through all of it, but he's sitting there with an academic. She's talking all about 
um, I think it's sociology or something like that. It was an amazing chat that they were having. I have watched the ones where he's chatting with Russell Brand. Those are absolutely brilliant. I do recommend watching uh, the ones he does with Russell Brand. I'm a huge Russell Brand fan. I don't have any particular opinion one way or another on Jordan Peterson, but I do. I will say that I like his lectures when he's lecturing the young students. Those some of the stuff in there is really good and I've really enjoyed and learnt stuff from him and it's good to have Saturnian thinkers on the scene, realists, you know, people who just tell you, clean your room. I agree with that. I think that's fantastic. Um, so yeah, I, I've been enjoying what's going on in the collective consciousness and I've definitely, look, I think it's here in the stars. I do. And whether or not this is post-rationalization, it kind of is. But uh, I think that's okay. I think we can we can do that with astrology. It's, it's wonderful to look back on past events and see that the astrology maps to them so beautifully. That's always a very satisfying thing because then, you know, maybe we're able to predict things going forward. That's very much the idea. So what can we predict for the month of June? What can we say? Well... You know, I'm not going to predict anything too huge. I think it's going to be more of the same. I think there's still going to be debate. I think these issues are going to be ongoing. I definitely think uh, in the month of June we're going to see some more debates. We're going to keep hearing about these topics. Um, you know, Me Too is, is still going to be discussed. People are going to be checking on Meghan Markle to see how she's getting on in the royal family, you know, is she a feminist, is she not, all these kind of uh, sensationalist headline grabbing, clickbait, you know, there's a lot of clickbait going on, I think clickbait will continue in the month of June, I can definitely see that, um, but you know, one thing about astrology that I am learning from, and I'm going to get grab a little book here, and I was trying to find the quote earlier today, it is in one of my old videos, uh, the quote that I'm thinking of in my head. This is a really terrific book. It's called Light on Life by Hart Defoe and Roberts Svoboda. It's absolutely fantastic. And in here, they talk about the fact that in, uh, say, for example, Western astrology, one of the ways that the world looks to Western astrology is we look for a report that gives us a prediction or something that's going to tell us what are we going to get what are the stars going to give us and in this book he explains that we've really got to change our mindset about how we look at the stars because maybe the stars are showing us it's not about what we're going to get you know it is a little bit of that jfk moment ask not what your country does for you ask what you give to your country so i mean he's saying that the the vedic system and in jyotish the idea is very much that the stars are indicating what we can live up to. You know, it's not so much about what, what are we going to get, but what do we need to live up to? What do we need to rise to? What have we come here to do? And I can say for the month of June, I do think Saturn's energy is going to be quite uh, prominent. Saturn is going to be, in fact, uh, if I have this correct, let me... Oh dear, I've gone into 2019 in my time machine, so let me come back to 2018 and let's come up to June. Yeah, Saturn's going to be retrograde by the looks of things. He's going to be retrograding through Mula Nakshatra. So this is what I want you to do for the month of June. Instead of it being about what, you know, what am I going to get? It's more about this energy is an operation. Saturn is going back through Mula Nakshatra. He's going back. He's covering some old ground. And so will you quite possibly. You might be covering some old ground too. You might be thinking, God, haven't I dealt with this? It's coming up again. Uh, but here's what you can do to make the best of this energy that's coming up for us. You can look at the masculine and feminine energies within your own life. And it's just a thing of observation. It's not about increasing one or maximizing the other or this or that. It's about looking and going, wow, okay, cool, you know, um, that's so interesting. And, you know, seeing that, wow, when I was a kid, you know, I was such a tomboy and, and now 
all I want to do is buy some pink nail polish and or whatever it is or god I want to dye my hair one of my friends she dyed her hair purple I absolutely love love when people do that I think millennials are so cool when I was working in central London a few months ago um, one of the young account executives who came to brief me she had this blue hair and I thought wow that's just great so you know I mean this modulation of masculine feminine energies is terrific to look at and the unexpected blends that we get within ourselves and the changes that we have within ourselves how we're different to what we were a decade ago that's always really fun to look at and explore. So that's a little bit more Rahu Ketu type analysis there. But in terms of uh, Saturn, what do you want to be looking at with the Saturnian energy? Okay, what do you want to get to the bottom of? What do you want to get to the root of mentally? What are you grappling with intellectually? Is there anything? Is there something you want to learn? Is there something you want to understand you know and sometimes we want to use our mind to do things that aren't really in the domain of the mind but you know what it's okay this is the time I think to to work the mind and, and, and use the intellect and um, you know understand emotions intellectually you know maybe watch something by Jordan Peterson I'll put a link in the description below for you to something that I like but you can you can watch him and it's really interesting. I um, was talking about him with a couple of friends of mine on Skype and I said, oh, you should check out this interesting guy, Jordan Peterson. He's just really interesting. I don't have an opinion one way or another, but he's interesting. And um, I got them to have a look. And anyway, they brought up some of his videos and they kind of went, whoa, he's a bit scary looking. And I'm like, okay, like I, I don't have an opinion on that. I don't know, but it's really interesting to see what reactions you have within you you know and and are you siding with him or are you siding on people who are opposing him or are you you know and it was really interesting when I watched the debate that featured Stephen Fry there were four people there and I found myself kind of you know every now and then I'd be like oh yeah I really like this person oh yeah I really like that person and I ended up really liking all of them by the time the debate ended I ended up disliking all of them so <laughs> you know it was really bizarre that at different points within that I think it was something like two hours long but it was really interesting to observe within myself I'm kind of going wow that's cool this person's cool and then just like at the end just going oh I don't like any of these people isn't that mad so um, it's, it's quite cool to explore you know intellectually with your mind as I've got written here explore okay what's happening within you you know so watch something of his but don't watch him watch you watch what's happening within you what does it bring up what does it you know that's a fascinating exercise in itself and I really think June is a good month to be doing that and I've got a note here one final note is what do you want to dig deep and discover Okay, so this is about digging deep, it's Mula Nakshatra, it's uncovering, it's going to the root, it's figuring things out, it's like, you know, the mind and the intellect wants to know and it wants to go there and it wants to get to the bottom of something. So explore that, you know, um, enjoy that exploration. And, and yes, it's mind, but at the same time, Saturn, Saturn's not airy-fairy, Saturn is always pinned down to reality. There's always some reality going on. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's the clean your room stuff. It is, um, it's, you know, yes, we can operate on the abstract plane, but guess what? If it's not pinning, matching to reality, it's a waste of time. And that's very much uh, the energy of what's happening here with Saturn in Mula Nakshatra and very much some of the energy that's going to be happening in the month of June 2018. So I really hope you've enjoyed this monthly overview. This Sorry about that, camera got cut as it does at the 24 minute mark. I don't know what that's about, but doesn't matter, we carry on. Uh, I think I was saying, feel free to give me some comments below. Let me know how you like this structure and if it's working for you. I hope it is because uh, the month after I'll probably do the same thing. I'll probably do a monthly overview and then I'll do part one, part two, where you can click on your bit, get your news and carry on with your day. So I really hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this video and um, yeah, let me know how you like it and 
I look forward to seeing you next time.